Hello everybody, I'm making this video because um, I inherited this old kiln and they don't make them anymore. And it's, it doesn't have uh, temperature dials on the bottom, it has switches. And it's a little different, I had a really hard time finding out how to fire this thing. Uh, it's, a, it's a gare kiln, G-A-R-E, and they don't make them anymore. But I'm sure there's other people out there who have one of these. See, it's a gare kiln. Okay, so here's how you do it with the switches. I'm about to fire a bisque load. On top you see it says, in this case it's left, to the left is on, and to the right is off. So then we go down to our switches, and there's four switches. And we want to make sure that they are all in the off position to the right. So right now they are all in the off position to the right. Okay, I've already loaded, uh, we might as well cover this too, but I've already loaded the, uh, the cone in. This also has a, like an older style cone thing in it, so might as well show that. Uh, it does take two hands to do it, so I, I can't actually do it on film, but I will show you. Here it is. Get in there. There it is, see? Um, we're going to be firing these, to, I think, to cone 7, 6 or 7. But at any rate, here's the uh, where the cone sit, the cone sitter. That's what it's called. And there's two things underneath, one on the left and one on the right, over here. And then there's one on the top that holds it in. So this top thing kind of jiggles around, and you kind of put it in there and center it. And of course, when the cone melts, then it drops. Now back to our outside here. In addition to putting the cone in the cone sitter, you have to flip this switch there. And that's, that's we're ready to go as far as the cone sitter goes. Now, you've got to warm the kiln. Now this was something that I, you know, I couldn't find out really how to do with these old, type, old style kilns. So here's our switch. Well, first of all, we're gonna, or I'm going to open these air holes. On this particular kiln, there's two, or peep holes they're called. So when we first start warming the kiln, I'm going to open both of these. This switches around and it, there's a little hole there. And then up right above, there's another one. I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, so now we've got our two peep holes open. We've got all of our switches turned off. And then the last thing we have to do is close the kiln, but we're not going to close it all the way at first. We're going to, in addition to opening the two peepholes, we're also going to leave the kiln cracked. So I'm going to stop for a second while I do that. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we're back and I've got the kiln cracked. Uh, how I've done that, put the lid down and I have one of these, um, I'm going to put my hand in front of it. It's a piece identical to this, but you can use anything. Uh, there, I think there's even certain kind of stones that work. I mean, you can find a lot of information about cracking the kiln, but this is what I use. It's one of these, and I've just got it, well, actually, I've got it turned out this way. And it's just propping the door open, keeping the door ajar a little bit on the top. So we've got the door ajar on the top. We've got the two peep holes. So we're going to get let it warm up slowly. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and turn the uh, switches on. Now in my particular kiln, it says on top that the left is on and the right is off over here. So we follow the switches down. We've got them all going in the off position. I'm going to flip the bottom one first to the left. And then you come up here by the thing that you did your kiln sitter, and there's a little switch in there. And I'm going to push that switch. And you see that the light came on. So now we know that the light is on, the kiln is in operation. We've got it cracked, we've got the sides cracked. And I'm gonna go, I brought the clock in here, we're gonna look at the clock, and it's 1.45. So we're gonna let this go for about an hour. And I'll meet you back here in an hour, and I'll show you the next step in warming the kiln. Okay, and we're back. Just about an hour later, and come down to the kiln. What I've already done, we were warming the kiln with it cracked and the peep holes open and, and thrown the first switch. So back here I've already closed the uh, lid and we had of course uh, one of these uh, stilt things in there propping the lid up. So this has been taken out. The lid is completely shut. And then the next thing I'm going to do also is close the peep holes. There's one and there's two. I've got gloves on because it's hot. You don't want to touch it hot. 
For now, that, that was the, this is step two. Close the lid, close the peepholes. And what I do is I still just leave it on this one switch thrown. So we're going to leave just the bottom switch thrown. It's going to get gradually warming the kiln with the peepholes closed and the lid closed. And I'm going to give it another hour, and then we're going to come down and do another, do another switch. So here we are. Now it's 2.45. I'll meet you back here in another hour. Okay, here we are again. Again, we're not quite on the one hour, but close enough. And all we're going to do this time is throw the second switch to the on position. Left on my kiln is on, right is off. So now we've got two on and two off still. So we'll be back in an hour to flip the third switch. Okay, we're back. It's roughly a quarter till five, and we're going to come down to the kiln again. And we're going to flip switch number three to the on position. So now we have three to the left, because on this kiln, left is on, right is off. We've got three th switches thrown and one not thrown. One is still off. So we're going to wait another hour and then we're going to throw the final switch. So I'll be back in an hour. All right. Here we are. And one more hour has passed. And we're going to come down to the kiln and we're going to throw the final switch. So now all four switches are turned to the left, which in this kiln is the right on position. And now it's just uh, waiting it out. There's okay. this light is uh, attached to the cone sitter. So when the cone inside finally melts, this light, this thing will come down. This switch will fall down, and the light turns off. So I'm just going to come, keep coming down here uh, periodically and checking it. And now I'm going to turn the camera back on uh, when it's done, because we're also going to crack it to cool it off. Okay. So all, all systems go, all switches on. It's 9.30 a.m. the next day. The kiln finally shut off around 3 a.m. last night. So it cooled overnight, cl completely closed. And when it does finally shut off, what happens is this light goes off and this drops. As you remember, it was up like this. Well, it just drops down. So that means the, the firing is done. The kiln is done. So it cooled overnight, completely closed, and it's still quite warm. I still have to wear my gloves, but now I'm gonna now I'm gonna cool it in the opposite way that I had warmed it. So I've got it cracked open with the kiln still, and I'm also we're gonna come over and we're gonna open up these peep holes again. There's one, and then there's one more on the bottom. Now your kiln may be different. There could be different kind of peep holes. Just take a look around. Sometimes they have them on both sides. This particular kiln just has them on one side. And so I've got the two peepholes open, and it's cracked. And we're going to let it, it's going to sit for a few hours because it's still quite hot. So we'll be back here in a little while to open the kiln. All right, here we are again. It's quarter after 12, noon, the next day from when we started. And the keg is finally uh, cool to the touch. I can touch it with my bare hand, and it's not, it's a little warm, but it's, it's fine. So now we're ready to open the keg. Okay, that's a close-up of the cone, and you can see that it's bent, and that's what caused the, the whole thing, to, the lever to drop down, that's what caused the lever to drop down, and the light to turn off initially. So there you have it from beginning to end. Not quite a 24-hour process, but now you know how to fire a traditional kiln electric kiln with the switches only. And one last thing I'm going to do, I always do at the end, I'm going to go ahead and turn everything back to the off position. All four switches off. Again, the right hand is off on my kiln. So that way, the next time I come down, everything's ready to start new. Okay.